<laughs> What's up, good people? It's time for another session of that verbal cardio, man. Where the clock at, Amir? I don't see the running time. Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. Yeah, man. We back. Oh, oh, oh. Hmm. Ah, we back again. Another episode of Verbal Cardio. I got my co-host extraordinaire, Water. Water is the best co-host to ever exist. It's the only co-host you have ever needed in your life. That person you think you need, you don't need them more than this. They might come a close second, but but without this, what you got? You ain't even got that person. Without water, there's nothing, man. We we got nothing. And I honestly, I feel like we living on borrowed time as a society, as a civilization, as a, as a species. Global warming, mass extinctions. You know, we water is in short supply, so uh, we might not last too much longer. So while y'all out here, you pro lifing it up, it might not be no life to pro in a minute. Cause goddamn, man, the stuff we doing to the planet, we we gonna be out of here. And the planet don't need us. Contrary to popular belief, we are not making the planet better. We're making it worse. And we're going to destroy it. We're going to destroy ourselves in the process. The planet is going to continue on with or without us. Even if the Earth turns into Mars or Venus, it's still going to be Earth. It's going to be sitting right here without us. And it's, the planet is just going to be chilling. Be like, I'm glad they go. It was annoying. You know what I'm saying, and and we not we not we not gonna have a, a run in the millions like the dinosaurs had. Dinosaurs had a a long ass run. We not gonna have a run like that because we keep fucking it up. We fucking the shit up, man. And so this is what it is. A lot of people are man, you over exaggerate. Global warming is not real fake news. All right, y'all feel the heat. Y'all feel the heat. We in mid ball sack summer. It's hot. Wherever you at, it's hot. Today, it was 103 yesterday. Probably 100 and something today. We out here in it. And it's getting hotter every year. You know what I'm saying? And when you're hot, you be needing this. That water. You be needing that water to save your life. You be needing that water to run your AC. You be needing that water to survive. What happens if this leaves? What happens if it's all contaminated? What happens if it's all Flint, Michigan in this bitch? What you going to do? What you going to do, man? Y'all better value the little things. Y'all focused on the wrong shit. You know what I'm saying? And fellas, man, stop busting nuts and women. <laughs> stop busting these nuts and women, man. The shit is real out here, man. Stop shooting the club up. Stop shooting the club up, man. All this Roe versus Wade is because we busting the nuts. Because we busting the nuts. It is. I mean, I get it. There's but no I'm pregnancy not. without us busting the nuts. No, I feel that, but I don't know if I. There's no need for the Roe versus Wade if we wasn't busting the nuts. But what? So you, so you're just gonna it's just gonna be semen retention for all or just semen. pull out. Semen retention means like when you just you have sex but you don't come. A lot of men do it because apparently there's like power and it's also good for your health and all this other stuff. Um, do they get pregnant? It's a no because you're you're literally not nutting. But so they're not busting the nut. Yeah, nah. Semen retention is no nut. Yeah, they can't be busting the nut. So you're you're for semen retention. I'm for. Or just not busting out. inside women. Oh, so they, pulling out. Pulling out, uh -huh. retaining, whatever. <laughs> or not smashing. If you can't, nah, if you can't man, control I the bus. Back this. I, Sabrina Castro, do not back up this, I mean, <laughs> this hey, message. I mean, hey, man. Let people smash. I want people to safely, smash. Safely, for sure. But now it's going to be hard for them to get the abortion because their plan is. Mm hmm. To outlaw abortion across the board. That's what they really want. That's what they want, but they need yeah, I don't know. The way America is going now, that shit could happen. So it's like, but the fellas, man, y'all got to take responsibility and stop busting these nuts inside. Mm -hmm. The women are the face of the movement, but that's unfair. Nah, but sometimes, you know, us women be like, 
come inside me. And Y'all then do like, be saying that. Yeah, and then it's just like, oh, my bad. I was just kidding. But it's still a dude's fault. And then, yeah, later on, I'm like, oh, my bad. I was yeah. just JK, but now I need that. Yeah. Shmush Morchman. They'll be getting caught up in the moment. And then here we are. Stop busting nuts, man. Bust outside. Pull out. <laughs> outside. Pull out. Literally run outside <laughs> and <laughs> bust your nut. <laughs> bust it, or get a vasectomy. Because you can get a reverse. If you really want to be smashing raw and busting inside. And I get it. Busting inside is the ultimate bust. That's where you want to be. It's like, ah, oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's a good time. I get it. I've been there. I'm no stranger to nothing. Actually, I'm a stranger to booty hole sex. Booty I'm a stranger hole. to that. But stop busting inside, man. Because the women are taking the brunt of this. Not men. Women are. I'm just trying to look out, man. Trying to be responsible. What a guy. Nah, man. I ain't even <laughs> about that. But it's just like, come on, man. Own the shit. I'm all about the ownership. You know what I'm talking about? You feel me? Because when the women get an abortion, they got to go through all that shit themselves. Mm-hmm. We don't. They be bleeding. They be they be struggling. Stomach be hurting. They be having issues. And we just be like, man, uh, I'm here. I'm here. You know, I'm, I'm rubbing your back. I brought you some cereal. Okay. We get off easy. But we the ones that cause the pregnancy. That's what I'm on. That's what I'm on. And I get it, fellas. You know what I'm saying? When she think you come inside. And you get caught up in the moment, and then, you know what I'm saying, the ramifications. The cramifications. And Plan B, they they trying to restrict Plan B now. I saw that when I woke up this morning. I'm like, y'all trying to restrict Plan B now? Because I've been in the Plan B situation. You know what I'm saying? The condom broke. I was like, Plan B. I bought the plan B, but then, you know, that was all I could do. Good for you, man. Yeah, man. Because some people don't do that. That's what I'm saying, man. Some men will not. They're like, $50. (laughs) You better pay that $50. But I got got plan plan B on deck, two for five. Ladies, y'all not not innocent in this either. Let me tell you something. Stop letting just any dude smash. Mm Mm-hmm. Get to know people's character first before you let the penis inside you. Get to know the character of the penis. Because you're smashing dudes that, that might bust in you on purpose. Or they're not even going to pay for the plan B. They don't even give a shit. At least know these are men of character that you're smashing. Y'all just be like, it's a good time. All right, it's a good time until you get pregnant from a dude you barely even know and like. So there's that. And men... I'm going to put a baby in you is not a compliment. Stop that. <laughs> that's, that's not a, that's not, that doesn't make me feel good. Like, yeah, I'm going to put a baby in you. Guys really be saying that to women like it's cute. Mm-hmm. And then women be like, uh uh-huh. And then they get caught up and then boom, baby. Do they say that to y'all before you let them smash? Mm-hmm. And y'all still let them smash? hmm <laughs> Ladies. But like. Have some sense. Please. <laughs> If a man tells you I'm going to put a baby in you, believe him. Yeah, believe that. Jesus Christ, man. Young Sabrina was an idiot. Just. I was like, oh, that's a sweet little compliment. Bruh. You want to be stuck with me for 18 years? That's nice. Come on, man. <laughs> Meanwhile, I never wanted a kid. Like, that That really should have never been a compliment. What, 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 is, what is happening here? By the time I was 25, though, I was scared of that, that sentence. Yeah. I was like, mm, I'm good. Nah, I'm good. <laughs> Because I really didn't want a kid. Like, that's the worst thing you can say to me. Right. That's like, yeah, I'm going to put it. Nah, you're not going you're not going to stick me with a child. How's that the move? Mm-mm. How's that appealing? That's the thing. I mean, if you're getting married and you want to start a family, then you can be like, I'm going to put a baby in you in this honeymoon. All right. Y'all talked about it. Y'all <laughs> y'all planned it out. You you planning a life together. But if y'all just smash it, and you don't even know, you don't even know the stipulations of the relationship y'all in. Shit, come on, man. Come on, man. Y'all just gotta make better moves, man. Make better moves. That's all I'm saying. Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? And I get it. I'm not exempt to the dumb stuff. I, I've done the dumb stuff. I've been involved in all of the the, the nut busts, and that was my debut in the streets. I might have got played though. 
You think, probably did. I think she just wanted some money. Yeah. I think she, but she was fertile. She already had two kids. So, I don't know. I could have got played. But, you know, I was young, inexperienced, two pump chump. Did not pull out. I, I couldn't even pull out. She was on top. Oh. Uh, I don't know why, whenever I imagine your first time, I imagine it at Dairy Queen. Literally at Dairy Queen. <laughs> Almost went down at Dairy Queen. That's what I imagine every time. Like it wasn't I, at Dairy Queen. Every time you you talk about it, I'm like, oh yeah, it wasn't at Dairy Queen. It wasn't at Dairy but Queen. But in my mind, no matter you can't tell me differently. I yeah. I literally imagine young Tony lifting somebody up next to the fryer. Put the pumps. cheeks right on the on yeah. the skillet by mm-hmm. the by the chicken tender uh yep. fry drop. Two pumps in. Ugh, can I take your order? Man. And then that's it. That's usually what I imagine. But Mm-mm. it was in a bed? It was in it was in uh yeah, it was in the bed. She was on top. And uh yeah, man, I didn't last long at all. It was like we was we was at our friend's house, mutual friend that we all worked together. And then we was hanging out over there. It was summertime in that Cutlass. And mm-hmm. uh, making out as usual. We made out a lot at Dairy Queen. And then it was like, you know. And I didn't have no place to stay, so it wasn't like, you know. I'm still young, tone living with moms. So we were like, oh, we, we, we doing this? So the buildup was long. And then, uh, so it went down and then no protection. And then I was uh, quick, mm. quick, and so that was my debut, man. Trash. I still want revenge, though. I um. Got to redeem myself. I still support that. Mm. I want you there in the room. Oh no, I'm I'm watching. I want you there like, in the room on, for baby. the redemption. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have popcorn. I don't care what she look like now. I know. I just gotta, you know, I just gotta rebuild my reputation. I'm gonna be like, yeah, you thought he was a two pump chump. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> pump me up on the side. I'm gonna be like, yeah, let me get that leg for you, shorty. <laughs> <laughs> Cause, man, you know what I'm saying? She's gonna see me on TV. I'm on TV. And she's gonna be like, oh, I know that man. She saw me on HBO Max. Like, hey, man, you funny, but man, let me tell you something. Because mm-hmm. women be talking. Y'all be talking about who you've been with and who was trash. Facts. Y'all gonna be like, he funny, but man, I took him down once. Y'all be bragging. Oh. Y'all be bragging about dudes. 100%. And so if it's a famous dude, she's going to be like, yeah, I took him down, man. You know what I'm saying? He ain't last long at all. Busted quick. And that's me. That's my legacy. And the dude she talked to going to be like, oh, man, he, he corny. Mm. <laughs> Can't even last. His, his career ain't going to last. <laughs> so I got I to gotta redeem myself. I feel that, though. I would have felt better if she knew I was a virgin. She didn't know. She didn't know. But so, you talk about it so much, she might know now. If she, if she even taps into any of this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You should just bring it on stage at, at, in a big, like on a big platform. The next HBO special, whatever special you got. Yeah. By the way, I was a virgin. The p- yeah. Two pump, I'm just Dairy Queen it pumps. Loud. Yeah, you just got to say And it's not even a joke. Yeah, it's just a serious business. You just throw it in there. And people be like, what? Yeah. Yo. Yesterday was a uh, a good time. Well, oh, Tony Baker and friends. Tony Baker and oh, friends. Oh, hold on is a back, second. Yo. I'm still live on IG. If y'all want to see the rest of this, join my Patreon, man. Become a patron saint, like the rest of these good people over here. Click the link in my bio. Join my Patreon to see this full live joint. If not, you can watch the episode tomorrow on my YouTube page. Let me get y'all out of here, shall we? Oh, so. Um, Yesterday was the return of Tony Baker and Friends at Burbank uh, at Flappers Comedy Club. Uh, It was a huge success. Good times. We back, baby. We back. Um, And it was a good time. Comedians was robust. The AC was not working. Mm. So I apologize if you were at the show and it was hot in there. I apologize. Uh, I don't know what's been going on. I've been having a streak of hot ass shows and i don't mean hot in 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 the way that you know it's hot it's fire it's, it's gonna be dope i mean hot temperature wise um so that sucks and i apologize i apologize wholeheartedly but it was a good time and it's back you know last monday of every month 
verbal, I'm not verbal cardio, Tony Baker and Friends, last Monday of every month, except for October, since Halloween falls on a Monday, we're not going to compete. Uh, so the next show, if you're in the L.A. area, is July 25th at Flappers Comedy Club in Burbank. Pull up. Get in on it. We having a good time. What else is going on? I actually wanted to talk to you about something that you mentioned yesterday on stage. Uh -huh. um, so the guy that drives around our neighborhood with the American flag and the Trump flag. Yes. You've seen him before? I see him all the time. Oh, okay. All the time. Uh -huh. uh, he lives near us. Oh, really? And the reason I know this is because I've seen him at the Rouse. Yeah. I've seen him over by Nectar. Uh-huh. I, I see him everywhere. Yeah. Bro, I seen him two days ago. And you was like, oh, I want to hear what he's listening to. He was listening to hip-hop. Was he really? He was listening to hip-hop. And I was just like, I am confused. Interesting. Sir. I mean, it might have been, like, somebody white. Yeah. But it was still a hip-hop beat coming right. out of his truck. And you heard the hip hop. And lyrics. I heard it and I remember saying out loud, yeah. nobody else in the car with me uh -huh. to myself, what the fuck? Yeah. This don't make a make a choice. Mm -hmm. So what we're talking about is there's this dude uh in our community. He drives around with a huge American flag and a huge Trump flag in the bed of his truck. Uh, I saw him parked at the gym parking lot the other day. Matter of fact, he was on my story real quick when I was talking about when I saw the bird with his shoulders out, <laughs> that that truck was in the background. Uh, pause. Never seen a bird with his shoulders out. You know what I'm saying? The shoulders was just out. You know, normally a bird, when they stand there, they tuck the wings back. It's a smooth transition from chest, shoulder, and then the wings are back. You know what I'm saying? Birds are all chest when they just stand in there. You know what I'm saying? It's all chest. You look at a pigeon, you look at whatever, and they stand in there chest first. This bird I saw, a big crow, black bird, raven, just them black joints. His shoulders was out in the front. Shoulders was coming out robust. He was like, yeah, he was browsed with it. I was like, yo, why is his chest, why are his shoulders out like that? And so I got uncomfortable, you know what I'm saying? And with the, it was with a the black bird, bird <laughs> shoulders out, you know. And I called I called the police. Mm, good. Yeah, I, I pulled the Karen on this bird. And, uh, you know, because his shoulders were intimidating. You mm -hmm. know, I was scared. I didn't know if he lived in the community or not. Mm -hmm. And I just felt threatened. I would, yeah, as, I understand. You know, and so um, I called the police on him. I don't know what happened. I left. Of course, of course. Cause, so after that, like, whatever happened to him, yeah. that's not your Not that fault. I have a problem with blackbirds. No, it's no. It's just, you know, he just didn't fit. You just didn't know that one. I didn't know him. He was in my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I just didn't feel safe. I, f I feel that. Because, so, it, yeah, it's a strange blackbird out of nowhere. A little disheveled. Out. Yeah, Shoulders, shoulders forward. Yeah. I was just like, I don't feel comfortable mm -hmm. in my own neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So I just, you know, I wish, I wish him the best. And I don't have a problem with blackbirds. I'm not. No. Anti-black bird. You have a, a a black bird friend, don't you? I do. I do. I do have bird friends. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. have bird. I have black bird friends. Yeah. So yeah. 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 You absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I like the Baltimore Ravens, and, and mm -hmm. you know, I like you know Edgar Allan Poe's poetry, yeah. and the Raven, and like you know, mm -hmm. Teen Titans. Nevermore. Yeah. Yeah. All the time. So you know, there's that. Um, <laughs> but back to the flag guy. So, you know, big flag, big obnoxious flags. It was just like, we get it, flags. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when we see Trump flags, I don't picture hip-hop being on the other side of that. So that's pretty surprising. I was shocked. You know what I mean? And loud. Yeah. Because I was leaving Nectar, and he was at the red light across, like, across the, the intersection. Mm -hmm. So it was loud. Yeah. Because you know, you know that, like, that McBean and... Yep. That's, that's busy, a, that's too. That's a big intersection. Yeah. So he was all the way on the other side. Wow. And I look over, mm -hmm. and it's, oh, boy. First of all, I seen him uh, three times in that day. Oh, wow. This was the third time. Mm -hmm. I, I was I had my windows down because it was hot. Yeah. And my AC was just like, uh, just give me a minute. And I was like, hold on. And there was no other car that it could have been. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, bro, what is what? Interesting. What is what? Interesting. 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 Um, but yeah, he in the community. So I kind of want to have a conversation with him just to see where his head is at. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know. Uh, Tanya asked me, uh, have you did any outside activities with your son since he has been home? Uh, the only thing we've done outside is uh, we went to Juneteenth celebration in Lamert Park together. Uh, we did that. And hopefully if he doesn't have, I asked him if he had any plans for July 4th. Hopefully we go going jet skiing. You know, you know, you know, the youth be busy. They be having their own little plans. So I was like, yo, jet skiing on the 4th? So hopefully he will join us because hmm. I'm, you know, I'm jet skiing for sure. Um, I haven't really done any outside stuff. I've been a cave dweller since last August. So I'm trying to come back out, get my energy up, get my, you know, I'm trying to trying to do more hanging out with friends and stuff and doing more stuff, slowly but surely. But the cave just be right. You know, the cave just be right there, man. But I'm trying, working through it. And I've never been jet skiing, so I'm excited. I'm excited. And I like swimming, too, you know what I'm saying? Just get up in that water, you know what I'm saying? Toes spread, feet kicking, toes pointed, feet pointed. This is probably a bad time to bring this up. Oh. But do you know who Mary Mara is? The actress? She yeah. Was in, she drowned uh, yesterday while swimming. This is why it's a bad time to bring it up. Mari Mara? Let me see that. That's Yo. She, yeah, that's why she on the docket. She did? Oh, wait, no. This is not who I thought it was. Okay. I don't know her. No. <laughs> no, di no disrespect. <laughs> I thought she said Mari Mara from... Uh, how to be a player in BET? She, oh no, she hosted. Mary Mara. I oh, just figured you would know this person. I don't know her. You'd be knowing everybody. I'm sad. I, you know, yeah, Mary, Mary Mara. She's in Blue Steel. She's in a few things. The movie Blue Steel. I remember that movie with Jamie Lee Curtis. Mm -hmm. You remember that movie? Yeah. Oh, you know about Blue Steel. No. And Ron Silver was the villain. He died. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm not real. Wait, hold on. She looked kind of. That's what I'm saying. I feel like she, you would know her. She was on SVU. She was on Nash Bridges, ER. But I don't, I don't fully recognize. But damn, man. Mm, yeah. That's sad. The family, man. Did she have kids? Let me see. That's tough, man. Yes. I was just like, wow. Like, that's, that's scary. Yeah. You just chilling and then that's it. The water is, is scary, man. I get why people are scared of it. Mm -hmm. Um, because it can take you out. I almost drowned before, so I get it. You know, um, that that's you know almost drowned in um, a swim class actually, mm. and I was doing like a, a little maneuver that they had us doing. They had us going to the bottom and then coming up to the top, and I got too far from the the wall, and so while I was doing that, I panicked and started panicking. And so then water was getting in, in my lungs, so I was just like, yo. And so in that moment, even though I was in the swim class, that jump-started my fear of the water. It, re, mm. it restarted it. I already had the fear. I was working through the fear by taking the swim class. Then when I almost drowned in the swim class, the fear is then reignited. And so I was scared of it again for, um, oh, this ain't no excuse not to drink water. Don't even try it, Kobe. We even tried Kobe McGuire. Mm -hmm. So from that moment, I think I was in high school, <laughs> junior high-ish. I didn't fully learn how to swim and get comfortable swimming until I was in college, deep in college. Mm. And I was a father at, th at that time. So that's, mm -hmm. that's when I finally conquered the fear. So I would say this was probably 2004. So how old was I then? 30... No, no, no. Hold Whoa, on. Whoa, hold on. I was 20. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, how old are you now? <laughs> right. Let's see. 87, 97. I was about 26, 27 when I learned how to fully swim. Mm. With, with, wow. with comfortable, with, uh, with comfort, you That's know, crazy. and no fear. Uh, I learned how to swim before I learned how to walk. Mm. Um, my my aunt just threw me in the pool. Yeah, and was like, "Fuck it, she might float, she might not." Had to do it early before you get yeah. the preset fears. I um I actually saved uh somebody from drowning when I was nine years old. Oh, 
Like I was a swimmer. Mm. And uh this girl uh I think she she was probably like 11. Mm. Uh she, you know, fell into the pool and her family didn't even notice and she literally just flipped like went like didn't even fight nothing. She yeah. just went upside down and then went down in oh, the wow. deep end. And then uh I hear screaming and her her parents didn't like nobody knew how to swim. Yeah. And so I look over, mad calm, because I'm a child and I don't know any better. Right. And I just swim down. I pick her up, take her to the the side, and the family's thanking me. And I'm like, you're welcome. And then I swim back. <laughs> I swim back and just start of playing course. again. And I'm just like in my own world, not realizing. Like, it was later on that I was like, yo, I really saved a life. You really saved somebody's life. I that saved a life. It's like, oh, 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 God. <laughs> and meanwhile, you I'm like, there like mm-hmm. That's split great. splash. Mm-hmm. Just another day for you. Yeah. That's crazy. It was just, it was, and I'll never forget that, like, the way she looked going down. Yeah. And in my head, I don't know, I just, I was just like, oh, maybe she means to do She this? was smaller than you? She was, no, she was taller. She mm. was, but you in the water. Right. Like, it still looked hard to carry somebody in the water. I, I just, I lifted her up and pushed her. And, yeah. like, it was, it wasn't really that bad. Was she struggling? Like, <laughs> Yeah, like by the time I got her out of the water, yeah. she then she started like panicking. Was she flailing and like doing yeah. all kind of and then so I just hitting was, you in the face? And I was just like, "Hey, man!" Yeah. <laughs> Literally, it was just one hand me pushing. Yeah. And pushed her to the edge, and her her mom and her dad just lifted her up, mm. and her siblings were there. It was like the whole family. Nobody knows how to swim. Y'all just yeah. at the pool, huh? Yeah. And uh, I, I used to be at that pool every single day. Like mm. I lived at the pool. You'd like, be surprised how many people go to the pool and they could not swim. Yeah, they could they be They just chilling. be there, hanging out, mm-hmm. kind of frolicking their feet in the water or hanging on to the wall. Yeah. And they just there on yeah. the regular. Yeah. It's just That's like, so you crazy. didn't think to, uh, you know, take some lessons, learn how to do this for real. <laughs> right. I, um, I miss swimming every day. I used to swim. Like, it was, especially when I lived in Long Island, we yeah. had a pool. I was in there all the time in the summer. Like yeah. The second it was it was open, like my uncle opened up the pool. Mm. I was like I'm in there, right? Every day. It was a good time. Swimming is fun, and it's a good workout. It's a good. Once I get in the pool, you can't get me out. It just takes me a while to get in there. Once I'm in there, oh yeah, I'll be wrinkled, wrinkled. What else is going on? What else is happening? Shaking. Sorry. Hold on. Oh yeah. Anyway, oh, huh? the I I did enjoy. So when I heard about the Bad Boy reunion at the BET Awards, mm-hmm. right? I was like, I wonder if Shine's gonna be there, cause I love Shine. Yeah, Shine's a good dude, and he pulled up mm-hmm. suit and tie, right? <laughs> Looking like a lawyer, <laughs> of course. <laughs> Looking like Barack Obama's third cousin. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's that Islam man. Yeah, I was like, and he still. He still brought it. Yeah. Yo, did he, did he dating? Did he do uh, Bad Boys? Yeah. I feel like he did. I listen, you know, that's another That's another one of my lifting songs. Um, Diddy dating Carisha is so insane to me. You say what? That Diddy dating. Is it her name? Carisha? I thought he was dating Young Miami or whatever. Nah. Oh, it's the same person? Oh, okay. Is it, yeah, she uh, said no. Nah. I don't know. <laughs> she See? don't know what the hell's going on. I just it's know that same. it's a city girl. It's a city girl. Um, That's all I know. How old is she? So we got an age gap then. Oh, uh, a big age gap. Is Carisha is? Yeah, I would say she's twenty something. No, she's, she's, she's twenty eight. Yeah. She's twenty eight. She's twenty eight. She's Diddy old. She's is, the older one. JT's the younger one. I think. Diddy is what fifty plus fifty two. Oh, okay. Listen, as a woman who was once twenty eight, hell no. Nah. <laughs> Are you in like the older men? It was just so creepy. I remember one time, uh, this didn't you date an older man? Th- this one, I'm, I went on a date with a 42 year old at 22, and I was just like, I don't feel right. And after that, that's when I realized, like, oh yeah, I can't do this. Uh-huh. I can't have like a like a sugar daddy. You talking about after the smash? You realize? Mm, yeah. <laughs> God, it took you that long to be like, you know what? This is weird. After we smash. Yeah, because it was it was just like. <laughs> It was too... But it could have just been him, the way he moved. Nah, man, I didn't like it. Man. But here I am, thirty, about to be 37 years old with a 45-year-old man. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you know what? What's your age parameters then? Uh, 28 
to 48. 20 years? You know what, 40? Yeah, 28 to 48. That's, 48. That's, you that's mean it. like like that I would look at? That's, that's too old for you. Like oh, what's your, what's your yeah, limit? Oh, yeah, yeah. Anything after. 20, 20 after. is the cap? Oh, I was I was literally put <laughs> like twenty anything after twenty eight is too young and anything after forty eight isn't too old. It's just like I don't feel like dealing with that. Dealing with what? Just anything over anywhere near forty or uh, fifty. Because I feel like once men hit fifty, y'all be getting grumpy. Like you got two, you got a, what five more years with me? I'm grumpy now. I know. So I can only imagine when you turn yeah, 50. I'm, I'm already here, man. I'm already in this. <laughs> but I deep. can I can handle your grumpiness. Yeah. Cuz I I expect it. Mm. And I feel like I know you well enough that's like, oh. People 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 know my grievances. Yeah, like I'm very vocal about it and so what happens is people put me in situations where all right, Tony don't like this. Let's put him in this situation. Or Tony don't like this. Let me let me keep doing this. So Tony, so it's like I, I let everybody know what I don't like, and then you know if you find yourself doing that or putting me in those type of situations, guess what? Mm. Grump city. You know, it's, so it's gonna be like Tony be grumpy. Well, I was like, well, you know, I don't like this, and so that's how it is with me. But it, it's usually not surprising grump Mm -mm. it's just like yo i don't like this and then you'd be like well you know and it's with you what's annoying to me is people who try to get get away with shit with you knowing Mm. damn well right you know tony don't like that right get the no me i i live with you Mm. i am your partner in life right and I wouldn't even try to like get away with half the stuff that people be trying. Like, yeah, let me just. Mm. I'm I'm the most no. Yeah. Mm-mm. That's because they know too. Like, all right, even if I do piss them off, I don't live with them. Yeah, like, yeah. You you got to be around the energy. If yeah. you piss me off, you we still got to be in the same house. Yeah. So it's just like, well, usually I flee. Like if I'm <laughs> if I'm not feeling, I'll be like, man, I'll be back. I'm out. You know what I'm saying? I'll come back a little I'll later. i come back a week later. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I, I'll be back. <laughs> I'll be out. I'm like, hey, man, I'm going to going up um, state. But, yeah, that's what it is. It's just like, you know, y'all know I don't like this. Man. You, you grumpy, man. Like, come on, man. You know what it is? Because y'all be setting me up for the grump action. I feel like people are just so used to people sitting in their um, upsetness quietly. Mm-hmm. And being just annoyed in silence yeah. that when somebody is vocal about it, that it's like, oh, you're grumpy. It's exactly. Like, nah, like I'm vocal about what I don't like. And I feel like that's so important because we shouldn't have to put up with what we don't like just to not make other people feel uncomfortable or feel like a certain way. Like, right. let me be grumpy. Let me be whatever. Let me be vocal about what I don't like so I don't have to continue to put up with it. Mm-hmm. Because I like, I'd rather not have a buildup of like, yo, y'all constantly put me through stuff that right. I'm not feeling. Uh-huh. I'm about to go off on y'all, right? If I continue this, so I'd rather let you know from the from the gate, like this is what it is. Mm-hmm. Fuck out of here. And then you know, cause uh, uh cause I, I don't like to be like quiet or weird towards somebody and they not know what it is. Like I don't want you, you know, guessing. Oh, I think maybe. Uh, Something might be wrong or like, you know, this, that, and the third. I want you to know, like, you know, I'm not feeling this, you know. And, but I enjoy the grump. So 20, 20 years is your cap. Yeah. That's a. Uh, yeah. That's normal. What about you? My cap? Mm-hmm. As far as like, first of all, <laughs> if I see a girl and I saw her as a kid. Well, yeah, we know this. That's immediately <laughs> off the table. She could be, she could be, she could be in her late twenties now, early thirties, and I'd be like, "But I saw you when you were twelve. Mm. Um, it's hard for me to shake that image unless I grew up with you. So, so now you know, because I've dated, I've dated someone. I was fourteen years older than, so that's been my personal record. As far as like age difference, 
and um so that that's been my record so far and i was just like man and i was surprised i was just like man i didn't think i could do this and so 14 for me was the most mm. like now like if i'm 45 um 28 and up is fine. 28 and up. Yeah, it has to be 28. 28. 28. I don't know what it is about 28. It, it just it's feels just... like close, close enough to 30 that I can be like, okay. Yeah. Like you, I, I'm 25 you can get away with if you have the right mentality. If you got the old soul, then. Yeah. Like, yeah like, you, all right. you only 25? I yeah. Sworn. How the hell you know about this? Yeah, well, yeah, you know, yeah. I grew up on, you know, the 70s stuff. Yeah, know. yeah. Um, but but it would yeah. have to be old soul situation. Um, but yeah, I just shoot for twenty eight. I just feel like as as a as a human, <laughs> um, it just it just feels weird to me. Like if I were to engage in sexual activity with somebody that's just like that I deem as young, mentally, you mm. know what I mean? Because I don't know if it's, be, if it's because um, I myself dealt with uh, like sexual assault at a young age and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And it's just like, I don't want to ever violate somebody. And they think it's cool. Like, oh my God, I'm dealing with an older, like an older woman or an yeah. older man or whatever. They think it's cool, but not realizing it's like, yo, like it can be borderline grooming. And you yeah. know what I mean? And I don't want to accidentally groom somebody. Right. Like, yo, my bad. I thought we was just chilling. And like later mm-hmm. on, I, I realized like, yo, like, I shouldn't have even been in this situation. Right. You know what I mean? There, There is somebody that I've felt like that with that I was like, yo, I was bugging. Like, I shouldn't even went on a second date with you once I realized how old you were. But then, yeah. and then that's why I was just like, all right, I'm done. Like, because it's just, I feel like it's such a fine line. And I feel like even more so with men because women, especially young girls, are just have this fantasy and this dream of just a man being there for them or even mm-hmm. taking care of them and stuff. And men can easily sell this dream to young women that they're just like, they do whatever. So that's why sometimes when I hear of these like age gaps, I'm like, yo, that's disgusting as a woman. Yeah. And as a woman who men have tried to take advantage of, or mm-hmm. like as a woman who's been in shitty ass situations that I didn't realize at the time, but later on I was like, damn, they were trying to groom me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like, I'd be, I'd be creeped out sometimes. I'm like, Ew. what is grooming? Grooming is when you um, pretty much make somebody into your ideal person mm. because they're young enough to mm. uh, to mold. Yeah. So you're pretty much grooming them to be your per- right. you like you're the perfect person for you, and they pretty much are shedding their own individuality because it's like yo, yeah, it's who you want them to be, and it's who they think they are they're supposed to be right in order to be a good person for you but it's like nah bro <laughs> and you, they and they also think it's normal you think grooming is just exclusive to age gaps no I grooming like no that, grooming that can happens. be anything but yeah but grooming is it refers to age gaps yeah grooming is what people like uh as a matter of fact what's her name got locked up today um jeffrey epstein shorty oh for real she got locked up today uh and that's that's the definition of grooming, like everything mm. they was doing. That was just weird, but like that's yeah. that's where where it comes from. It's just it's crazy. It's I crazy. do know people do it. Oh man! And in age, age equally yoked ages too. Oh. I think people just do that in general with relationships. They try to mold whoever they you know target or not target, but just like whoever you date, and you be trying to mold low key. But it's it's different though. It's, like it's Woody Allen, there's a difference. Woody Allen. Oh yeah, that's that's. Perf- but that's like the perfect example of grooming. That's beyond grooming though. That's you can't just adopt a a goddamn child and then date her down the line. That's motherfucking. Uh, yeah, that's grooming that's pedophilia. One one. That is so much other shit with Woody Allen. Yeah. You know, but I I do feel like there's levels to grooming and I do feel like people that are the same age they be trying to groom one another you be trying to change the person you be trying to make them do this that and the third 
And you might get blowback because they grown and they, hey, man, look, this is who I am. Oh, oh, oh. But I definitely feel like that. And, you know, fellas, men, you know, when you when you got, <laughs> when you had sex with that older woman that was way older than you and you was a kid, yeah, was stop like... holding on to that as a source of pride, bro. Yeah, you that's... got molested. <laughs> you were sexually assaulted, bro. I, it's, it's been so many guys that I've that I know personally that be like, yo, I lost my virginity when I was twelve. And she was twenty something. Get, bro, you were a victim, mm-hmm. and I, I, I think it's kind of it's it's kind of cool that you look at it with like a badge of honor, to, to, but it's not it's something not cool. to be proud of, man. You you were a victim, man. You were like that. That should not be. It wasn't like. You know, you won her over. This is this isn't like Mm-mm. thirty on thirty. <laughs> you wasn't like, yeah, I came in, I was the man. You were a child, and this woman took advantage of you, man. It was, it, I experienced that a lot. Now I didn't experience the, the the older woman on me, but it just boys that I knew, like yeah, and I was just like, you know, at the time it sounds kind of cool because it's like you know we're attracted to older women when we're kids. We're like, man. Miss Brown could have me at any point in time, you know, <laughs> but it, it's still, it's it's absolutely not right though. It's, it's kind of it's right crazy because a lot of those dudes who've gone through that mm-hmm. are overly sexually active. Yeah, and that's how it it reveals itself mm-hmm. because a lot, you know, a lot of times sexual vict- uh, sexual assault vic- victims or you know any anything along that uh, those lines. They are hypersexual, like most, like not all the time, but a lot of the time. Right. They're hypersexual in um, in their adulthood, and that's where it stems from. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. I don't know. There's like a whole, uh, there's like studies on it, and there's like I looked into it because I dealt with that. You know what I mean? So it's like it's it's just crazy they you know they're all proud but now they're smashing everything that they can everything everything that they can yeah. actually someone not too long ago told me that they they started at 13 mm-hmm. and now they're just like it's bad yeah like i i was just like bro like you need help yeah. <laughs> like i really wanted to help them because mm-hmm. i'm just like what they say they're like nah you know nah you need help bro like but i don't i didn't want to overstep yeah. But in my mind, I'd be looking like, you need help. <laughs> yeah. How did they bring it to you? Was it like, uh, this is how, this is the life I'm living and I'm proud of it? Or was it like? It was because I like whenever I'm I'm around people, I like to get like pretty personal. I talk about everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, oh, so tell me about your life. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, you know, I'd be doing this, that, and that. Like, what's, what's, what's good with the shorties? Like, what's, right. what's that looking like for you? Mm-hmm. And they'd be like, oh, yeah, you know, this, that, and the third, da, 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 da. And their situation was just like it was so much that I was like, "The hell? How did this like? How did this come about?" Because for me, it's always like, "Where does this stem from for, right. for you?" Like I become Doctor Phil. Mm-hmm. Um, I was like, "What is your childhood like? <laughs> Why is this your reality right now?" And then they told me that, and I was just like, "Yeah, you might need to yeah. uh, unpack a lot and heal from a lot of childhood trauma, and like, there's just a lot of shit that you really." But um, you know. That's on you. You'll be, get there. They be blaming it on. I, I just got a high sex drive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's always the go-to. And I'm like, mm-hmm. and I know uh, I got a friend who, you know, in college, he was in the triple digits, Mm-mm. and with the, with the body count. And I was just like, bro, like, you know, why? And this is this is me, you know, younger Tony, probably sexual peak too, and I'm still just like the hell you doing man what why 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 you know you ain't got to smash everything smoking and but i didn't i didn't dig deep at that time dig deep into like the origin story of you know why are you doing this man you know what i'm saying like why triple digits yeah and i was just like bro that's that's too many goddamn people man come on man slow down Take it easy, man. You ain't you ain't got to smash everything smoking. <laughs> and so and so now, you know, I don't know what his numbers are now. You know, I could probably ask him, he'll he'll tell me, but you know, um 
Actually, I know I know a few people in the triple digits. Now that I think about it, guys, and it's just like sit your ass down. I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm a firm believer in the sit your ass down for a second. <laughs> you ain't you ain't got to be sitting yourself, sitting yourself. Just you ain't got to smash everything smoking. You know what I'm saying? Just sit your ass down, marinating yourself. It's okay. It's all right, man. Don't give me that sex drive crap. Don't give me that. There's something else at play here, and it's, it's it's not good. So come on, man. Take it easy. Oh, speaking of the Bad Boy reunion, though. Uh, well, not even speaking of the Bad Boy reunion. But <laughs> these surgeries is getting out of hand. Yes, sir. The surgeries are getting out of hand, man. Y'all just, y'all just. You tearing your bodies up. It's, it's just looking ridiculous at this point. When you walk in and you look like surgery, that's not the look. You want to look as natural as possible. With, with the surgery, you want to look as natural as possible. You got the surgery to look to enhance your look, but you don't want it to look like surgery just walked in the building. You don't want to walk in job, surgery, butt work, you don't want to come in with that right off the top. Make us make us second guess. Make us be like, yo, this is, man, oh, you, you get work done? Like, at, at least let us question it. At least be like, all right, you know what I'm saying? You know, give, give us, you know, something. And these jobs are getting worse and worse. The plastic surgery on the face and just like, extra booty meat and it's just like come on man especially when you was a, and I, you know it, it's easy for us on the outside to tell somebody you are already beautiful you already look good whatever because it's really all about how you feel about yourself internally but god damn man it just it just sucks to see it it's just like man you know you tan yourself up man you're frankenstein you become frankenstein you become just the, just a whole bunch of parts put together, and it's just like, man, you were, you know what I'm saying? You were, you were perfect before, you know what I mean? And and it's really, I guess it really just comes down to a mentality for the person that's that's constantly getting surgeries and changing their face and t changing their body up, and it's just like, and I get it, you know, I struggle with. You know how I view myself. I don't. I don't see myself as you know that attractive at times, and I just be looking at myself like, man, you know, I wish I could change. You know, you look at yourself and be like, I wish I could change this or that. You know, but for me, it's just it's just moments for me. It's just like, man, I ain't feeling this right here. And then I'll be like, you know, but and then I'll be like, food is good. And then I get distracted and then I move on. But like, you know. Um, but some people, they look at themselves and they be like, oh, I hate the way I look. I'm changing this. I'm changing my whole skin color. I'm changing my lip. I'm changing my, my, my cheekbones. I'm changing all. Now you talking weird. Now you sound funny. Like you don't even sound like yourself. And it's just like, it's looking ridiculous. And I'm just like, now that you got all that surgery and you changed your whole face, what do you see when you see this new surgery up face? Are you looking at it like, yeah. Now we cooking, or are you looking at it like, no, nah, they didn't get it right. I got to go back under the knife. And it's just like, God damn, man. And then you're just looking utterly ridiculous. So it's just like, be careful, y'all, um, you know. And I get it. You know, we all we all want to change some stuff up about ourselves. and uh, Some people don't. Some people are like, I am perfect the way I am. You better looking than all you motherfuckers. And all right, more power to you. But at least... You know, they are themselves. Um, but it just sucks to see, especially when you see what people were before. And it's just like, damn, man, it hurts. Um, can I just say to all my women out there who are younger than 30. Um, 28? Yo, yes. <laughs> Pretty much any woman that's, Younger than 32. If you're like, I don't got enough booty. I don't got enough titties. I don't got enough. I ain't thick enough. Da, 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 da. Yo, when your grown woman body come in, 
Let Shorty. the grown woman body kick in. Because mine just kicked in like uh, two years ago. <laughs> I said, who the fuck? It's, 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 it's upkeep. You know what I mean? It's some upkeep. Mm-hmm. But it's coming. You know what I noticed about you? What? When you be when you be looking at your old pictures and stuff like that, you really was scrawny, man. I was scrawny, and girl. I'm talking about I'm not even talking about I'm talking about a skinny. few years ago. You was I was like when I met you, I was skinny. You was wasted away, and now it's like because you you got a flat stomach, and it's just like the the hourglass. Mm-hmm. You got the hourglass shape. And so it's just like, and I'll be telling you this all the time. I'll be like, you have the body women would pay for. And I'll just be like, man, you know, they would pay top dollar for that top and bottom. And when I look at your old pictures, and it was a picture you had of and you was in the mirror or something. Oh, I was just man. like, who was this kid you looking at? I was like, and oh. it was you in your in your twenties. I was, I was just like, uh... 28. <laughs> That's crazy, but you look like, who was the little kids you looking at? I think I was either 20 or 29. You a scrawny McGee out here. Yeah, I was mad skinny. But that's what I'm saying. Like, a lot of a lot of these girls be getting their body done in their 20s. And yeah. I'm like, bro, like, and then that's why when they get older, yeah. it should look crazy. Like, yeah, like bro, how you going to have the body on top of the body? Exactly. Like, it's just resting there now. Now you look silly. Now look at you. Your natural is trying to get elbow room from the surgery work. Right. It's just like, can we get in here, please? We're supposed to be in here. Yeah. Actually, uh, we already did this. No, no. I'm the natural. I'm yeah, like here. I'm really here. Yeah, so, and so I, that grown with the the grown womanhood is coming in. It's coming in. Just be patient. Yeah, like I really feel like, cause once like, I'm I was thinking, damn, I I I got fat. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like I was dealing with that the past few years since the pandemic. Like damn, yeah. I got fat. And then I just realized like, oh nah, like. I, I hit that real puberty now yeah. <laughs> at 36. Your voice got deeper, too. My voice got deeper. You was like, what's up, Tone? Yeah. Like, oh, this puberty, mm-hmm. your voice was cracking a couple yep. times. I, I grew. You had that John Connor voice in Terminator 2. Yep. That was me. Man. <laughs> <laughs> that awkward in between. Mm-hmm. But yeah, man, just... Uh, just wait. And don't fall under the pressure of, you know... Society and what you see on social media, all these nice. bodies and all this work being done, don't feel like you have to do that just to keep up or just to, you know, follow the trend because it's your body, man. This ain't some, you know, me, me following the trend to me is like, all right, everybody's doing this type of com- comedy posts. Let me hop in and do my little take on it. This is your body. You know what I mean? So if you're you like. Mind. If you feel like you need your body done, work on your personality first. <laughs> There's that too. Because personality trumps everything. It does. You know how many people have a nice body, but they boring as shit? Oh my God, dog. They like, they just not that fun. Beautiful. Beautiful. I know so like... many. There's people that I'd be like, yo, like, you know me, mm-hmm. especially with a pretty girl. Yeah. Yo, man, we should hang out. Like, let's, da da da. Like, yo. Then I hang out. I'm like, God damn, you're boring. If you're boring with me as a friend, yeah. and I'm a good time, and I'm right. going to bring out the good time in you, mm. I can only imagine you in a relationship. Oh, my God, dog. Women be boring, man. Beautiful women be boring. I know, because all they've ever had to do is be beautiful. Yep, and that's it. And it's like, and They bro. ain't bringing nothing else to the table. And then, like, they can't make fun of themselves. They can't yeah. be silly. They can't be seen. Yep. A little off. Not, my cousin's like that. My cousin is gorgeous. Yeah. If her hair is slightly out of place, oh, three God. strands out of place, nah, she hiding. Yeah. And it's it's just, it's silly. Like, be silly. Mm-hmm. Life is way too short to be serious all the time and to always think you got to be fine at all times. I just posted a, a video today. I was like, yo, I look good. Let me add a mustache to it. Mm-hmm. Because I think I look better with a mustache. I'm you sick know? of you and that mustache. I, I fucking love me and that mustache. That mustache gives that me... goddamn mustache. <laughs> that, that mustache gives me power. Because I it knew... It gives me strength. <laughs> Even she was in the car doing this and she was all, you know what I'm saying? I knew, I was like, I bet you she gonna put the mustache on. Hell yeah. And showed up, she was like, <laughs> the mustache. I was like, goddamn mustache. It makes me feel sexy. I, I mean, feel whatever like, works. I feel like it makes me feel like a, a natural woman. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I feel, I really feel 
Like, I can do anything with that mustache. <laughs> the mustache. Mm-hmm. You should get you a fake mustache and wear it. Or I could just grow out my time. real one. I mean, you can grow it I out. I don't think it's going it. to get that thick, though. Oh, it can get anything. <laughs> like this? Yeah, I look just like you. Since okay. people already say we starting to look alike. Yeah, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with it either. I don't agree. Yeah, I, I got a agree. similar nose. Huh? Oh, See, yeah. I got similar nose shape. <laughs> we got a similar nose shape? Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. Nah. Nah. Yeah. Nah. It's oh, not, you it's agree? Not super, oh, you just met su- us. Su- super damn, pronounced. That's kind of hard hidden. Yeah. Shit. I got my grandfather's nose. You don't got my grandfather's nose. I got I'll fight my, you. I got my grandfather's voice. Yeah. Voice? I don't know what they got to do with anything. But that's all I, I remember. Had. I remember. So it's I think weird. I got my father's nose, though. Huh? I was looking at my grandmother, right? Mm-hmm. My mom's mom. And looking at her straight. Yeah. I have her nose, right? But then my dad's dad, I was sitting next to him. So looking at him from the side, I was like, yo, but I have that slope. Yeah. So it's a combination of both that's of them. Slope. So it's kind of weird. My nose is big, though. Your nose is definitely bigger than Sabrina's, but y'all have similar shaped noses for sure. I, don't know. I mean, I'm not like I'm not I mean, y'all I'm on the outside like, looking in, so you're getting better angles than we are. But mm-hmm. you know, man, watch out. <laughs> Somebody says shave your head. If you go on my uh, YouTube yeah. channel, I actually did a whole Tony transformation where I did oh, a yeah, bald yeah. cap and everything. Oh, I did yeah. facial hair. You gotta repost that. I literally transformed myself into Tony. So go look up Sabrina Sith on YouTube and uh yeah you can find my transformation. And work on your personalities, ladies. Work on your personalities, bro. And like, fellas, man. Hey, please. Some of you some of you six packed up ass dudes, y'all dry on the personality tip too. Y'all bringing nothing to the table. Lord. Personality is king. Let me tell you something, man. I'm ninety percent personality. Three percent water. Seven percent looks. All right. I'm personality McGee. You catch me Firing on all cylinders? Oh, man. Good luck keeping up with this. Because my per- I'm cocky about my personality. You catch me on a good day, I'll be like, hey, man, I'm going to win you over. I'm going to get your parents. Mm-hmm. I'll be winning parents the fuck over. Oh, no, like relationship? Huh? Like in relationship? Re- everybody's in parents. Friends, women, whoever. That, I'm going to get your parents. That's the, that's, that was been my, like one of my best qualities. Like oh, growing man. up talking to girls or whatever. Yeah. I was like, if you, I was like, if you think that, I was like, oh, they don't like me. I was yeah. like, they don't know me. Yeah. Which ain't me, me. It's, yeah. it's game over. Oh, man. I'm telling, they're going to be like, they're going to be talking about me the whole time. Listen. I just know it. I'll be taking, I'll be asking my friends, I'll be like, hey, yo, what's your, uh, what's your mom think of me? What's your dad? Your parents feeling me? I'll be literally asking. Ask, ask your uh, mom who they favorite friend of yours is i'll be literally asking <laughs> the vibes in the man listen group. i'm after these parents sabrina's parents be asking about me i'll be like you got damn right you asking about me i um you know what i'm saying you asking about this i i'm good with parents but mm-hmm. they judge me they prejudge you all because like i've had a sleeve i have had full tattoos since 2005 this is 17 years mm-hmm. of people looking at me. And this was before tattoos, everybody had it. Mm-hmm. Think about it. Like in 2005, it wasn't like you don't see a lot of women, especially women that was like looking like me, full sleeve. My I always had my ankle tattoos out. I had piercings then. So like everybody just look at me and be like, nah, I don't like her. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't do right. no drugs. I am like literally this is all, this is it. And I'm just positive. And, but they will look at me and be like, nah, yeah. man. Look out. She on drugs. She cooks me oh, man. Yeah, I'm she like, bro. Man, de- man. I definitely fighting. got, I got that a lot too. My parents would try to clean me up a little bit. Like, For nah, real? It'll be your hair. Because I was wearing my hair like curly or whatever. And they was like, nah, you got to comb it out. And I was like, bro, I look like a pop filter on the microphone, bro. I'm not <laughs> going over there looking like this. Like, I, I hate trying to doll down my personality right. for somebody right. to like me. So me and my parents had a divide when I was like my first girlfriend, like trying to make a good impression on them or whatever. So the first day I went over there, I did whatever they told me to do. I was like, yeah. okay, whatever. Cool. I did it, right? And then I came back and I was like, y'all not finna make me do this every time. So right. I was like, I'm 17 right now. I was like, nah, yeah. it's not finna make me do this every time. <laughs> and then after that, it was just whatever. It was like, nah, that he, that's who I am. Like, yeah. you know, they're either gonna like me, who I am, not this person that I'm trying to act like, yes, yes, ma'am. Like, I'm, <laughs> I, I have manners, but I'm gonna, you know, speak to you casually in a way, you know, yeah. feel comfortable. Cause, you know, I'm not finna be, I just, I just won't do it. And I don't think that's a, a good thing. I don't judge anybody beforehand or whatever. And I do right. feel like women for sure get judged before the guys. Oh, absolutely. oh my God, tough. we get judged tough. tough. They, I used to hate it because I'm like, bro, I'm probably the best thing for your son. Mm. <laughs> like, 
I will keep your son in line. I will make sure he ain't doing no stupid stuff. Like, yeah, I am loving. I am caring. I'm gonna be like, yo, what's 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 wrong with you? Like, we don't do that yelling stuff. We not doing none of that. Right. But they'll look at me and be like, mm. nah, man. I'm like, what the hell am I gonna do? Yeah. And yeah, so I. But once they get to know me, mm. parents love me. Yep. Once they know me, it's over. Right. They're like, oh wait, oh. It's a rap. Mm-hmm. That was funny. My yeah. dad literally told me he was like, if you were at your age right now, and he was like, and your girlfriend, I think we were 17 and 16. He was like, if I had a 16 year old daughter, you, as who you are, would not be dating my daughter. And I was like, what? what? Like what? Hmm. That made me be like, wait, what did what did you do to right. me for me to be not good enough for your supposed? And I think it's just like you know, if he had daughters, he'd just be way more protective, I guess. Uh, but I was like, come on, bro, you know me. Yeah, it's like I am your child. You know I ain't gonna do nothing to these these folks. I am your child. For me, it's like uh, I don't know. I just like parents. Because mm-hmm. once I see the parent, oh oh oh, this year this year I, I light up. I turn on. I just yeah. this is just what I do. Like you, you know, if I meet any of my friends, parents, or whatever, I'm just like oh oh, oh and then I just be shopping it up, chilling, and then you know, because the kids y'all are assholes to your parents, mm. except for me. <laughs> I'm good to my parents, but a lot of y'all, you know, you got your underlying beefs or whatever. So when I come in smooth, you know, having it, like, hey, man, look, fuck what y'all talking about, what y'all went through. You know, you doing your thing in here, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, man. Parents, man. Got to win them over so I can see them in embarrassing oh, pictures. That's I got I'm... your ass, man. I need these for the Instagram birthday posts. I'm yes. Gonna... I'll, be, I'll be getting the parents, man. Keep your, don't bring your parents around me. All right, you, you know I'm gonna charm they socks off. You know what I want to? I want more in my life. Hmm. I want to meet more grandparents. That's where I. Oh, that's yeah. where I really grandparents. shine. Grandparents. That's grandparents got the stories. Nugget. Oh, that's yeah. where I. Yo, listen. I was telling you the other day how like, um, how I met my ex's grandparents. I'm a grandmother. Hmm. Then after that, I was just like, man, I, you and I are done. Yeah. But me and your grandmother. Right. This is this is long term right here. Hanging in there. <laughs> this is I would go to her house. She made me the cucumber sandwiches. Yeah. I was like, well, bless your heart, sweetheart. I'm telling you, man. Love loved her. Yeah. Old ass lady, barely able to walk, but she said, It's so it's so nice that you came to see me. Man. And I was like, Man, of course, bro. I just wanna see, you know, what you doing, what you up to, telling me stories. Shout you know out. me, I like history. So from the mouth? Oh yeah. From the source? Mm. Come on now. Shout out to my friends uh, Dennis and Carlene Meeks, brother and sister. My, my that's my family out in Sacramento. I had the honor of meeting their mom um, shortly before she passed, and um, man, man, we hit it off immediately. And it was just like you know they they mm-hmm. I still have that picture of me and her, and it was just like this is what I'm talking about, man. The parents, man, I'm all in. Shout I'm out. The- Shout out to them. I remember the first time you see my grandmother, you're like, oh, oh. She <laughs> She's was so, so she tiny. was so much smaller in, in real life. She's so tiny, yeah. especially that day. She mm-hmm. looked, I, she looked like a doll. I felt like a giant in there. I, was like, I feel like I was really a giant in the Princess Bride in that goddamn house. Yeah. I was like, hello, hey. <laughs> you know that giant voice? Yeah. Just be like, man, are you a giant? Um, yeah, she was so small in that moment. Mm-hmm. I was like. You know what? She is pretty small. Next yeah. to you, I was like, I never noticed this. Because <laughs> one thing about me, one of my strong suits is when I'm dealing with the elders or, you know, I know how to engage, talk to them, ask them questions, give them attention. I put my phone away and I talk to them, you know, and I I know that just really matters to them. Like, you know, they're old school. They're not used to cell phones all the time and us, you know, multitasking and doing other things. It's just like, you know, when I'm around Sabrina's dad and, you know, it's just me and him, I'll be talking to him. I'll just be like, yo, you know what I'm saying? I'll be asking him questions about stuff and he just, oh, oh, oh. And so they're happy to give the info and just, you know, exchange and I'll just be like, yeah, yeah, so what was it, so what was it like? So um, <laughs> that's my strong suit. Now, one thing about me is that I'm very, I don't like getting my head talked off. But um, but I also do know how to ask 
engaging questions to people like about their life and their experiences and, and people are drawn to that and like and they, and when they feel like people are listening and taking it in be like man you know man when you gonna bring Tony back around hmm. you know, and sometimes you know what I'm saying they'll like me better than their own kids and you know I, I get it I get it you know I'm not giving attitude you know some of you brats you don't deserve your parents hmm. you know but I come in and I'll be like you know what hmm. You are amazing, and so is this food. And they'd be like, man, thank you, man. My kids never tell me this. They'd be like, you know, I got you. You know what I'm saying? So uh, don't bring your parents around me. Because I'm going to charm their socks off, the compression socks, whatever, you know, whatever kind of socks they got going Yo, on. Yo, you remember when my dad walked into the green room, did a hot two minutes? Everybody was like, man, I love this something. guy, and then left. <laughs> Sabrina's dad, man. Oh, I, I got I got DC Irvin's dad, hook line oh, and sinker. Yeah. He'd be like, "How's Tony doing?" And DC <laughs> be getting mad, like, you know, I do comedy too. He'd be like, "Yeah, yeah forget all that, Tony." Um, so shout out to my dad, DC Irvin Senior. That's that's my dad now. Um, but Sabrina's dad, now Sabrina's dad ain't no slouch oh, on the personality tip. He came to the show in New York at Caroline's. He was only there five minutes. <laughs> He came in there, boom, pow, you know what I'm saying, bow, boom, working the room. The room was, mind you, the size of a closet. But, you know, he was working the room. There was a lot of people in there, though. It was piled in there. So it was like, he was like surrounded. And he was giving it to us. We was like, oh, oh, oh. And he was like, all right, I got to get out of here. Boom, boom, pow. And he was gone. And we was like, man, whoo, that was a good set. That was a good set. He did his thing in five minutes. If, if the way like, I knew he killed it is mm -hmm. that B. Lou was like, yo, that's your dad? And B. Like, Lou is tough. <laughs> He's tough. B. Lou is a tough crowd with people. And but he was all in he on my dad. He was all in on your dad. <laughs> he was like, so he he did his goddamn thing. Yeah. He went in there and just dipped and went back to work. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, I'm on my break. Yeah. I was like, but you work in Queens. <laughs> yep. He was like, we're I'm out of here. We're in Manhattan. Love you, mommy. <laughs> exactly Boom. how we did here. it. All right, let me do this movie review. Sorry, we we didn't get to questions, but it's, we are hour and seven in. They trying to rush me out of the studio today, and I still got to do one more thing. I saw the Black Phone. I saw the movie The Black Phone. It's a scary thriller, supernatural thriller, kidnapper thriller, supernatural. It's a weird like hybrid of like actual thriller mixed with the supernatural, with a little bit of like horror. Yeah. Like, you know, there was like definitely Subtle some scary. Horror. Yeah, like it was definitely yeah. elements that I was like, like me, a horror fan. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. like that got me. You right. know what I mean? Um, So this movie is an interesting hybrid of like several different like genres in one. Uh, The movie stars Ethan Hawke as the grabber, you know, so there's no, there's no, there's no spoiler, you know, you, you'll you know it from the trailer. Um, He's the grabber. <laughs> So he's, uh, you know, he pretty much snatches kids up. And the story revolves around this one kid that gets snatched up and, you know, held captive in this basement. And the only way he's surviving is there's this black phone down there in that basement. And he's literally getting calls from the dead children on. And they're, they're talking to him and giving them ways to escape. And so we're going through the process of, of him being kidnapped and him talking to the ghosts of these children. And they're giving him tips on how to survive and how to get out and how to get loose. Um, it's set in like 1978 uh, in, in Colorado. That's the setting of the film. I like period pieces like that. And for some reason, the 70s is one of my favorite eras of, of existence. I don't know why I like the look. I like the aesthetic. When movies are set in the 70s, especially on the scary side, I feel like they're creepier to me. Like when I watch The Conjuring and like stuff like that, and it's set, even when I go back and watch Halloween and Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the 70s just look creepy. It looked musty, it looked creepy, it looked. It's something about the 70s that I'm drawn to. I don't know if it was because I was born in the 70s or what, but I'm just like, yo, all right, I'm into this. And. One thing about the black phone, in my opinion, I feel like now Big Irish J disagrees with me. He saw the movie, he didn't like it, but I, I like the character development. I thought the one of the movie's strong suits was 
they develop the characters of the the young man, the lead young man, and his sister. So you care about these two kids and what they're going through and how they're living and the environment that they're in. So immediately, immediately that hooks you in. It's like, oh man, these kids, man. You know what I'm saying? It's tough at school. They got bullies and shit. And the school they go to, thugs, thugs, like bullies beating the shit out of kids and like you know kids fighting hard fights, rocks to the forehead, temples bleeding, repeated sock outs to the face. I gotta send a message. I'm like these kids are violent. Kids getting beat down at the local store by the pinball machine, pulling out a knife. I'm just like, yo, thug life, the 70s, thug life. And so it was like, yo, back then you had to have hands. This is the 70s, man. Nobody had the pistols. So these kids got hands and they was using them. And it was brutal. And I was just like, God damn, man. So... This young man and his sister, you know, they're just trying to navigate life through the bullies, through the bullshit. And, the, and his, his little sister is tough. Like, she's tougher than her older brother. And so she's like, yo, man, why are you always getting punked and doing that? Why don't you ever, you know, and great little sister to have. You know what I'm saying? Um, the baby of the family is always the best kid anyway. I just want to throw that out there because the baby's rent supreme. But, um. I just really, I really like the dynamic that they had and the uh, the bond that they shared and the development of these siblings. And I, I'm a fan of like close sibling relationships. I like to see it. I like to to be around it. I like stories about it. And and so since their father was pretty abusive, he was weird. It was like he loved the kids, but he was abusive. He didn't know how to communicate with them. You know, old school parents, 70s, so they pulling the belt out. You're getting the whooping. And he's very much like, you know, they walking on eggshells around the house, and he's a drinker, and the mom had passed. So it's just like you're dealing with all these dynamics within the household. Meanwhile, you got these, these kids getting kidnapped by this dude in this black van, the grabber. And he's grabbing up, he's grabbing up robust kids, like kids that, you know, star athletes and, like, kids that can fight and, like, you know, the bullies, he's grabbing them up. And so it's just like, well, goddamn, man. You got to turn on the bully juice if you're getting kidnapped. If you're beating up the kids at your school, keep that same energy with the grabber, goddammit. I need you to keep that same energy. Don't be, don't, don't be folding up because they grown. Nah, man. Sock the grabber out, man. Treat that grabber like that kid you was looking for in the restroom. All right? Sick of it, man. You know what I'm saying? Keep that saying. If you're going to be a bully when you get grabbed into the van, keep that bully energy, goddammit. Bully the grabber. They should have called the movie that. Bully the grabber. <laughs> Ethan Hawke did his thing in this movie, man. Ethan Hawke is a good actor, man. Like uh, from, from Training Day to The Magnificent Seven to um, uh, he was also in that other scary movie. What was that other scary movie with Ethan Hawke? Um, where it was that it was that it was that creepy man on the old school projector films, and it was like he could see them watching him in the films. Sinister, sinister. sinister. Oh. Um, Ethan Hawke is a good actor. Shout out to Ethan Hawke's daughter and Uma Thurman's daughter, who is in Stranger Things, and she's uh she's doing a good job on there. And uh, so shout out to the family. They out here acting as a family. He also did his thing in Moon Knight as well. Uh, did you finish Moon Knight? Mm -mm. Oh, snap, man. Uh, I, I, I got two more. Two more? You like it, Moon Knight? Yeah, it's a good time. Yeah. It, uh, but I, You know, I really like, uh, what's his name? Uh, Oscar? Oscar. Oh, he's killing I, it. I love Oscar. Like, it, he could be in anything. I'm like, all right. He's I'm killing it. it. Yeah. He's uh, he's dope. Oscar Isaac's resume is deeper than y'all think. Yo, it's crazy. He's been in so much stuff that I've gone back and watched. I'm like, yo, he was in this? It's it's crazy because I feel like I've noticed him the entire time. But yeah. I didn't really register right. him yep. the entire time. So it's like, man, I like this guy. And then I learned his name. And yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah, Oscar. Once I get your name, I could usually, because he was in Drive with uh, Ryan Gosling. Mm -hmm. I watched Body of Lies with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and Russell Crowe. He was in that. And I was just like, yo, he was in this? Yeah. And so I was just like, I'll notice it. But that, that dude is phenomenal. Great uh, individual. And so um, so Ethan Hawke plays the grabber. And Ethan Hawke is good, man. He's creepy. He's 
He's weird. He's not overplaying the creepy. Even though he is the creepy grabber, it's still it's still kind of understated. It's like he's not going over the top with the I'm gonna, I'm gonna be creepy and creep you out. There there was a, a nice little balance there. Um so it was a pretty enjoyable supernatural thriller horror joint. Um solid viewing. Uh did pretty well at the box office, made over twenty million dollars, and I'm sure the budget was low. So uh, there's that. But forget all that. You want to know the smooth jazz review of the black phone. Well, here it is. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know you like. Why did I just turn around like that? I'm giving the black phone three and a half saxophones out of five. Yeah, man. Good solid joint. If you're in the mood for that, go check it out, man. In the sea of cartoons or animated movies and top guns, you might want something a little bit more creepy in your summertime lineup. And I think... I, I say go see it. I say go check it out if you're into that sort of thing. But one thing I one thing that kind of throws me off is that tonal shift of it feels like it should just be a standard thriller, but they have this supernatural element. So it kind of throws me off that they're both in there. Because a couple of times I was just like, they really just on the phone talking to this kid? So I, was, I just never fully embraced that. Just because of just the, the telephone. Like, if it was just going to be just straight-up ghosts doing the thing, I'd be like, all right. But it, it, it was something about that telephone aspect, and I was just like, oh, I ain't really feeling this. But other than that, um, it was entertaining, so I enjoyed it. Anyway, uh, let me know what you thought of the movie in the comment section below. Also, what you giving it? I'm giving it a four, and uh, I feel like the idea of a telephone makes the most sense uh, in something like that because of EMF. Um and I feel like they need to use what that. Is EMF? Like it's a, like electrical magnet magnetic field. Mm -hmm. Like they use like you know, ghost hunters. They use a lot of uh, electric stuff. They use radios. They use a whole bunch of stuff in order to communicate to the other side. So using a telephone, yeah, makes all the sense mm -hmm. in the world. Because like when you watch uh, ghost hunters, they be using the you know the little radio thing that just be staticky, and then you you have random words coming through. Yeah. So like I I really like that. Cause that's what it made me think of. I was like, "Oh yeah, mm. the telephone." I get it. Yeah. Um, and then I like the creepiness. Um, I like the jump scares. I like the visuals. Of, visuals are great. Yeah, you know what what we saw. Um, I love I love the sister. She was dope. Mm. Um, hated the father, but that means he did cool. what he had to do. Right. Um, and then the boy like. I believed him. Mm -hmm. Everything about him. Yeah. I was like, man, Jesse Eisenberg Jr. is <laughs> killing it right now. <laughs> yeah. He did his thing. The kids did they think. They they killed it. And then even like uh like his his little bestie friend. Yeah. Like I was like, I believe this. I like this kid. Yeah, he, me too. he was on he was on screen for five minutes, if yeah. that. He he made his presence felt. But you felt him. Yeah. So it's like I really, I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. And um yeah. So four. Yeah. Four for me. Mm -hmm. That's good. I can give it a. I can give it a flaccid four. A flaccid. Yeah, I feel you know it. What I'm saying, but yeah, definitely check it out. Um, let me know what you thought in the comment section below, though. If you have seen the Black Phone, let me know what you thought in the comment section below. Um, also, what's your favorite genre of scary movie? Like, as far as time frame, is it the '80s, '70s, even before that '60s, 1800s? the 2000s what is your favorite era setting wise for these horror movies let me know in the comment section below um but yeah y'all thanks for tuning in to another episode of verbal cardio getting the hell up out of here stay tuned for gross point bake the new show i got going on um stay tuned for that and you're uh yeah y'all shout out to my patron saints in here live and uh, until next time we out